Oh, now we are. All right. You want to give the intro again? That was good. Oh, man. And we're live from Vox Big Picture High School from 429 Civic Action Class here with 5th District Council candidate, Mr. Jeffrey Young. Round of applause. Thank you. That, thank that you. is our that yeah, is sure. our best intro yet. Hi yeah. everyone. I'm Sam Ford from Committee of Seventy. Uh, this is the second of our six Studio C seventy student can interviews today. Uh, as you already heard, we're excited to welcome Jeffrey on Jr., Democratic candidate for Philadelphia uh, City Council, Fifth District. And now I'm going to turn it over to the ever energetic uh, Robbie Marson and the students at Fox Big Picture High School. Take it away, guys. Thank you. All right, who's up first? Ari. Come on, let's go. When you ask a question, please, again, like they see, they see us here. Sure. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm well. Do you want to come up here? All right. all right, so my teacher told me to do a little icebreaker question and then jump right in. All right, cool. Is, is that a meatball beanie you got on? Ain't nothing? No, yeah. Ain't nothing, huh? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is almost Halloween over. What do you think the best scary movie is? The best scary movie? See, I'm not really a scary movie fan. But honestly, for me, it has to be Final Destination because they it seems like it could be too real. So, thank you, Jack. All right, now the hard heavy questions are. All right, my first question is based on safety. Why do you think people do and don't rely on the police? Um, I just think that in in our communities, particularly uh, where I'm from, I just want to give a little bit of background on where I'm from. Um, you know, I was uh, born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, I went to school not too far from where you you all are. I went to Girard College um, and it was raised uh, in North Philly um, and around 26 and Ridge, Johnson Home. So it's not too far from your school. Um, and I just think that there's a, a, a mistrust between uh, the police and our communities, given the, the longstanding histories uh, of why policing started uh, to begin with. Uh, most folks don't even know that the police force started as slave catching patrols, right? And so as you integrate that um, hundreds of years later, uh, the systemic issues that that plague our policing model um, uh, when it comes to dealing with our citizens and our communities um, creates this, this mistrust. Uh, so I do think if we can have uh, some more trust in our communities with the police, uh, the police are more integrated in everyday life in our communities and not just come to our communities when uh, it's time to arrest, uh, but also integrate in our communities when it's time uh, when it's positive times, I think that we can create that trust within our communities. You don't need that, all right? Come on. Oh. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. You, hey, I got so happy. Hey, you got it. Oh, God, Andrew. You can go next. Hello. I'll look you. Good you. morning. My name is Kiara. Um, one of my questions is, what are some challenges that you have had me overcome, like elevating and coming up? That I have not overcome? Yes. Um, I mean, every everyday life is a struggle, right? Being a Black man in, in the city, um, you know, there are some challenges that we face just by going outside. I mean, you look at me, right? If I, I don't have a suit on today, I'm I'm just dressed in my regular khaki, my my polo shirt. But when I go outside, people don't see that I'm an attorney. People don't see that you know I'm a Democratic candidate for city council. All they see is a black man with locks. Um, right. so those are my challenges every day. I I'm my 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 goal in life is to be able to go outside and people just see me for who I am, other than the stereotypes that they see as as a black man. Um, and I want to help change those those narratives. Okay. All right, good morning, Ayani. Hey. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ayani, 
And my question for you today is, you say you're here for the people, so like, what's some of the things that you want to do to show the people that you're here to like, you know, interact with the community? I'm going to listen to the people, right? I think that there have been elected leaders and, and other leaders in, in our communities um, who think they have the best ideas. Um, you know, I think I have good ideas, but the people are the ones that um, are going through the suffering. The people are the one, uh, are those that are going through the challenges and issues. So one, I have to listen to what you all have to say. You all know your communities best. Um, and two, I have to engage you more. I have to engage the youth more. I have to engage communities who feel uh, isolated more so they can be involved in the political process to know that they have a voice in making changes in their communities. Uh, so that's those are some things that, that you know, that I'll do. Hi. Good morning. What's your name? I can't hear you. It's Angelica. Nice to meet you, Angelica. My favorite cartoon is the Rugrats. All right, my question is, so you said you're trying to engage. How do you want to do that? So you meet people where they're at. Um, being from those communities, I understand where uh, folks go. Um, you know, someone asked me a question about how do you get to know what's going on in the communities? To be honest, I go hang out at the bars. I go hang out at the, the you know, on the corners talking to my, my, my cousins, right? My friends. Um, so I meet people where they are. Um, and, and once you meet them where they are, they understand that you are from that same type of place, same type of environment. You understand the things that they're talking about. Then I can tell them and bring the resources that I want to push to them. Um, and then they'll be more open and receptive to listening to the things that I have to say. But you got to meet people where they at. What's up? Hey, you gonna go? Are you like social showers? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, my name is Makai, and the question is, uh, how would you approach the SEPTA strike? Um, well, the fortunate thing is that SEPTA has signed a one-year contract, so we, we, we will have a, another year of service. Um, but essentially, what we have to do is sit down with the workers of, of TWU, which is the SEPTA, the SEPTA union, um, to really figure out what their issues and concerns are um, and how we can make their jobs safer um, and also work with the management of SEPTA to figure out how we can make SEPTA uh, more efficient for the community. Um, and I think once we you know, have those in-depth conversations, I think we can all uh, reach a deal because SEPTA is an essential service to our community um, and our workers are the ones that, that keep our, our, our city's commerce going. Um, so we have to figure out um, a good, a happy medium to, to make our workers satisfied with the safety, um, make sure they get paid well, um, and also with SEPTA, make sure that their management comes up with more efficient ways to, to move people throughout our region. I'm going to jump in real quick. Get out of here, Aaron. Uh, Mr. Young, bro, I'm... All right, come here, Aaron. Come on, say hi. You know, is Aaron one of our student athletes here? What's up? I can't even see Aaron. You're so tall. I can't even see you. <laughs> Man, what's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, question for you, though. Assume upon your, you know, assuming, you know, you, you enter office soon, right? Yeah. Is there a existing bill that's not a law yet or an idea for a bill that you want to get into law uh, that you want to prioritize? when you're in office to get, you know, get votes on the council around and, and try to push through. So so one thing about me and my, my past experiences, I, I I used to work for the current council member, um, helping him come up with laws and policies for the city. So I have six bills I already have drafted, ready to go on day one. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, six of them. Um, the, the first one being dealing with um, the uh, maternal health issue um, in our communities. Uh, in 19121 and 19132, we have 
uh, almost uh, almost triple the average of maternal deaths um, in our community. So that means that the black and brown women in North Philly, um, they're, they are either dying or their children are dying um, uh, during the birth process at higher rates uh, than, than those throughout the entire country. Uh, so I wanna make sure that we uh, attack that problem first and foremost uh, to make sure that uh, we can have healthy communities. Thank you. Uh, who's up next? You don't think you mentioned that already? Yeah, I think you mentioned that What's your favorite holiday? Uh, my birthday is Independence Day. Uh, okay. No one else got a question? I got more of that. Even in getting our question, it was not Miracle's got one. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Miracle. Um, what's your favorite season and why? Uh, my favorite season is summer um, because I hate being cold and my birthday is in the summer. <laughs> when, when your birthday? July 4th. Independence Day. Um, my question is, minimum wage has been the same for years. Do you think that's a problem? And if so, will you change it? It absolutely is a problem. Um, I mean, minimum wage in the state of Pennsylvania is what seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Uh, no one can live off seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Um, in twenty twenty three, uh, here in Philadelphia, um, there is a law on the books that state that if anyone is getting a city contract, uh, then the the minimum wage is higher. I believe it starts at like twelve dollars and ten cents and is working its way up to fifteen dollars. But that's only for city contracts. Um, unfortunately, and we do not have the power alone in Philadelphia to change the minimum wage. That is a state issue. So we have to get our state legislators um, and our, our governor uh, involved in that process to change the minimum wage for uh, Pennsylvania. We Out of the states that border Pennsylvania, we have the lowest minimum wage. New York's is higher, Ohio's higher, Maryland, West Virginia, New Jersey, Delaware, all of their minimum wage is higher than Pennsylvania. So that puts us at a competitive disadvantage um, in the workforce and attracting the workers to come to Pennsylvania because nobody want to work for seven dollars in a quarter. Hi again, it's me. Um, what made you want to be city council? Um. I want to help my community. I want to help change lives. And I want to show my community that uh, there are other alternatives to what we see every day. Uh, being someone who's from the community um, and you know who, who understands the struggles of the community, uh, I want to let people know that there are ways to get out um, other than what we see every day on social media um, or even at home. Uh, we have to be, I, I want to be the example to you all so you know that there is someone who cares about you, who cares about your future, um, who wants to, who wants to change laws and policies to make sure that your life is better. Uh, so that that's why I decided to run for city council. Um, I started out back probably when I was your age in high school. You know, I started you know running for a class president and vice president, those type things like that. Um, and it just got me more excited about um, helping people. That's my goal. My goal is to help people in any way I can. Um, I think that's why I became an attorney uh, to help people with their legal problems. Um, and now I want to, you know, help people in, in a different way um, on city council. All right, always at it. Come on. Um, oh, yeah. Come huh. on. Let's talk about crime. Right. Do you think, and as a black person in the North Philadelphia, North Philadelphia community, do you think crime is a city thing, a state thing, or just a global thing in general? Crime is since the beginning of time. There's always been crime. Now there are things that I think that a city can do, that a state can do to help alleviate crime, um, to to lower crime. Uh, to the type of crime that we see um, in our inner cities um, is very unique. That crime is nowhere else in the world. Um, there is nowhere else in the world where there is one particular culture group of the same 
uh, ilk out here just killing each other and shooting each other randomly like this, right? Just over petty differences. Um, so I do think that um, it's going to take a more comprehensive agenda to tackle our crime issue it's unfortunate that in philadelphia we could we do not have the power to control our own gun laws uh, we have to go to the state uh, for those particular uh, reliefs um, and unfortunately we live in a state where there are folks who um are okay with the you know folks who look like us killing each other um you know having very lax gun laws to allow guns to easily penetrate our communities um, there are folks who are okay with not providing our communities with the resources that we need in order to better our lives so we don't turn to a life of crime. Um, so uh, my job as your, as your next city council person is to make sure that folks in our communities have access to those resources, have access to a proper education, um, because educated people, for the most part, don't commit crimes, right? Um, the higher level of education you attain, the lower um, your uh, statistically, your probability will be of you actually committing a crime. Um, the, the more uh, money you make um, at your job, uh, the less likely it is that you will commit a crime. So we provide folks these opportunities, um, then the crime will, will naturally uh, will lower. Um, but we have to show our community that there are other opportunities available to them other than what they see, what they learn, what they learn and what they hear. Um, and we have to provide families with the support they need to make sure they're raising their children in a proper way to become productive citizens. Um, we all know everyone's not going to be, you know, the uh, an uh, NBA player. Everyone's not going to be a rocket scientist, but everyone can be a productive citizen. And we just have to put those resources in place to make sure that everyone um, becomes that. Okay, I've got one. I have another question. Go ahead. Fossil drug use. Drug usage. Now, drug usage is unnecessary. And shut up. But um, I have somebody in my family that is going through a tough time with drugs right now, and they're doing rehab. But the where, the places where these rehab centers are at are right next to the source. Mm -hmm. So it's also like, how are you claiming that you're getting clean, but you're also doing dirt? So that's something that's near and dear to me as well. I also have, you know, very close family members dealing with drug issues. I also have best friends dealing with drug issues. I had a best friend uh, who was was murdered because of his drug issue. Um, so I, that's near and dear to me. I do think that we have to provide folks with the proper, again, resources to kick their habits. Um, and one, folks don't get clean unless they want to get clean. So we have to show them that we continually love them. Um, and then provide them with those opportunities to get clean. Um, the locations of these uh, facilities, again, are uh, causing some of the problems, I, I think, as well, because they know, um, because, of course, the dealers know, we're just going to set up a shop around the corner and let them just meet us here before they go to their rehab treatment facility. I think there needs to be more enforcement from the police um, in some of these locations um, and set up these safe zones to where those communities know that there's going to be no tolerance for that type of illegal drug sale activity where folks are trying to better themselves and better their lives because the more temptation you give them, the easier it is for them to come back to some of their um, their challenges that they face. Um, and I do believe that um, you know our city is known worldwide for having some of the best drugs. And that's a problem. Uh, that is a problem and we have to figure out how we can are going to tackle that problem. Um, and we have to think outside the box in terms of treatment. Um, so I have some ideas on some alternative forms of treatment to get folks um, off of the drugs that uh, those those hardcore drugs that they are addicted to, which causes some of the, the ills in our communities. Um, and I will be, you know, expanding on that once I get a, become a, the city councilman. Yeah, I'm sure. and I got one for you by way of miracle. Okay. I'm a first time voter at this election and why should I vote for you? Um, you should vote for me because I am someone who uh understands every aspect of our community, uh, from every level. Um I have worked at the highest levels of city government. Um I have worked at uh in the communities, in the trenches as we say, of uh, doing anti-violence work, doing community cleanups, um, and everything in between. 
Um, so there is no person in our community that I think can best represent how we feel and put our issues to the forefront in, in our communities. That's why I decided to run. Um, that's why I was the only candidate to make the ballot out of seven people trying to run for this seat. I am the only one to make it because I'm the only one who's doing things the right way. I'm the only one with the experience to represent us. And I'm the only one who can articulate how we feel um, directly to our government. Um, and so that's why I hope that, you know, you will vote, vote for me um, this uh, upcoming election. Um, every issue that our community goes through, like I mentioned before, I have dealt with. You, you name it, I've been there and I can provide solutions to those problems. Gun violence. I have friends and family murdered by gun violence. Drug addiction. Friends and family succumb to that particular problem, right? Homelessness, right? We lost our, my house was foreclosed on at a young age. I understand everything. Domestic violence. I've been, I lived through that in my very life, right? So everything that you can think of that someone in your community is going through, I have been through. And I think that I have the solutions and the political will to say enough is enough. It's time to do things differently. The way things have been going on for, I don't know how many years, it has to change. Um, and I'm not afraid to stand up and fight for my community. I'm not afraid to say that's wrong, that's wrong. And I'm not afraid to speak up for you when you see that there are some issues that you want, you want to see done in, in your community. Well, thank you again, everybody. Just another really great session uh, this morning. I really, I'm, great questions. Uh, and uh, we just love seeing uh, the interaction uh, between candidates and students. So just before we close, uh, just a couple reminders. Again, that election day in Pennsylvania is November 7th, coming up, coming up. Uh, visit 70.org, use your ballot tools, stay informed in all the candidates and everything on the ballot and tune in to our upcoming sessions. Uh, we Our next one is in 20 minutes. Uh, and so thank you again, everyone for watching and we will uh, see you in 20 minutes for the next one.